So let's kick off. So today's session, uh, we've called data determination and a little bit of doubt. Uh, how you've doubled your EBITDA in the last nine months. So Georgie Brooks from Greater Data, how are you doing today, mate? Mate, I'm doing fantastic. That's good. You've had a big year. You've had a massive year. Yes, I have. Yeah, and, and in many ways, uh, it hasn't all been great either. There's been a lot of challenges and I know there's been a lot of stress and there's also been a lot of movement within the business, within your staff, within your structures. Um, for those that are, that are listening in today, could you just share a little bit of the background about, uh, a bit more about you and specifically what it is that you do? Yeah, great. So Greater Data, I started it just over 10 years ago now. And for the first sort of eight and a half, nine years, I the, your question was, what did I do? The answer was pretty much try to do everything. The what we do as a business, we provide data driven marketing solutions for our clients. So that could be anything from providing data to help fuel marketing campaigns. It could be around strategy and insight pieces. So helping customers understand who their who their customers are and how best to find more or, or how best to communicate when to communicate with existing customers um, we've got some pretty big hitting clients that, that that spend quite a bit with us as every time i every time i feel a little bit down on myself or, or how the business is is going i i like to remind myself of two things and that's that there's a, a couple of clients and a couple of my staff that have been with us for over seven years so we must be doing something right wow wow and about a year and a half ago, I, I clicked on a, an advert for the Game Changers and then was called and had a good few conversations with the sales team there. Had a good few conversations with, with Barry and, and Anna at the time and basically knew that I needed coaching didn't understand why so I went into this thing um, to say I went in with my eyes open I think Barry you and I know that's a lie um, but I went in very cynically but I knew something had to change I didn't I didn't know what had to change I just knew something had to change because whilst our top line was good our profitability was okay we just weren't growing and I just couldn't I couldn't put my finger on it if I knew to knew then what I know today when I set up the business I think I'd be in a very very different position but you can't change back time so I can just be grateful for the last 18 months everything that I've learned everything that we've implemented and the differences made to the business yeah it's interesting what you share um so, so two things I'll touch on first of all like you're not a, a, a typical marketing company and I say that with with the utmost respect and I remember when I first met you I didn't quite understand I was like how are you a marketing company because you don't go and create creative for people or run Facebook ads campaigns or Google or anything else like that um, yours is a very different approach around basically as you said like you know gathering all the data you can and assessing where there's potential gaps in that in, in opportunities for your clients and your clients are you know, big clients, they're not the usual sort of, sort of, you know, small business generating six figures, you know, they are a massive, massive clients. Um, so obviously you're playing with a different kettle of fish. I want to touch on though what you said, and, and that was that you, um, you had, you, know, you were very skeptic when you came on board, but you also knew you needed help. You, you knew you needed help, but you didn't know why you needed help. And it's really interesting to have this conversation with you here 18 months later, because I remember specifically when I first met you and some of the questions you're asking back then compared to some of the questions you now ask it's a very different uh you're coming from a very different standpoint and back then i what i see is that you're trying to kind of understand what that urge was that you knew you needed help you didn't know what you needed help in mm -hmm. and trying to just understand how that all fit together whereas now your questions are a lot more around well how can we how can we keep doing more of what we're doing because it's working and there's been a big shift in uh process there's been a big shift in team but i think you know being on this journey with you the biggest shift's actually been in your mindset and how you've shown up as a leader. And, and there was inklings of it then 18 months ago, which was that even though you weren't clear on, on what the picture looked like, you were still willing to step forward to the unknown. You were still willing to invest some of your time and some of your money to explore an opportunity because you knew that where you're at was, was not growing. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a significant thing that differentiate, differentiates you and, and equally to a lot of our community from most other business owners out there is that they're too willing to guard what they know 
and they're not, they're not willing enough to to put themselves in the line. And what I mean by that is that they're they're technically putting themselves in the line all day every day, but they're trying to spend all this energy and effort to keep what they've got because they're afraid of losing it, rather than being willing to to constantly uh, be curious around what's out there and realize that there's always a different game they can be playing. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a really good quote that I read um, in. So, so Keith is my business coach and we do a lot of work around scaling up from the, the Gazelle book from uh, Vern there. And there was a great quote I read in it the other day that said, for a business of 10 employees, the CEO's, the CEO has to delegate the things that they're not good at in order. That, but that changes a, 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 a business of 50 employees. The CEO has to delegate the things that they're good at. Of, of everything I've learned, done, everything, that, that for me is just a sentence that absolutely encapsulates mm. the, the difference it's made because I don't want to be a company of 10 employees, I want to be a company of 50 plus employees. So that change in mindset was absolutely required. And for, for, like I said, you know, sort of, sort of 18 months of, of this work has led me to that position where I've realized that my the role I was doing 18 months ago compared to my role today is so vastly different. Mm. And that's, that's been the change. That's been the difference. Yeah. Yeah. And there's been a significant growth through that journey. Like I think that we have a responsibility as business owners to uh, constantly move to make ourselves redundant of whatever role mm. we're in, because unless we're redundant of the business, we essentially have a job, whether that job is like CEO or general manager or leader, Right, or whether that job's like wearing ten hats, marketing and sales, and you know, uh, bookkeeping and everything else, we yeah. still have a job until we have a business that runs without us. And I think that that needs to be ultimate goal. And I, and I know, like a number of our clients, Tracy, and Vanessa as well, they're like, well, we love doing what we're doing. We don't mm -hmm. want to be out of the business. And it's not about having to be out of the business. It's, it's around the fact that you can be out of the business, and that's yeah. the difference. Yeah. And I think with you is that um, you know you have entered this, um, not really having any idea which way to go. You had already built a great business, as you said. You know, top one revenues were good. You were making some money, but you're also stuck because there's a lot of complexity in the organisation. Yeah. And ultimately, um, you were the bottleneck. Yeah, I was I, absolutely. I was the bottleneck. The buck stopped with me. Everything eventually fed up to me. It didn't matter what I tried to implement. Ultimately, it returned back on me. Um, partially, uh, well, 100% my design. Partially because I didn't want to let some things go. And partially because I didn't know how to get rid of other things, but ultimately everything ended up coming back on me. Yeah. So let's let's take a bit of a journey. So over the last past eighteen months, you, you sort of started with the Opulence System Program and then moved into the Boardroom Program with Keith. Mm -hmm. where, where were you at personally, and where was the business at eighteen months ago before starting on, on this journey? Mm -hmm. So where were we as a business? I wore a lot of hats in the business. I was basically the lead of sales, lead of marketing, lead of product development. I had managed to outsource areas that I didn't enjoy, like finance, uh, like operations, but not, I didn't do a huge job of letting, of basically making that vision clear where we were heading. So I had a lot of people who were willing to come in and do the things that I prescribed I was not very good at, in fact, I just didn't do it at all, at saying, hey, here is where we want to get to. These are the tools we've got today. This is where we want to be. You tell me how we get there. And the difference now in my approach is by giving, by first of all, hiring smart people, and, and to your point there about um, the ability to step away from your business, one of the things this has allowed me to do is to be the dumbest person in the room and I'm absolutely nailing it. Some of the people that, um, that we've hired are just absolute brilliant industry leaders. And what that's allowed me to do is to uh, build trust that mm -hmm. if I give somebody a problem or if I give somebody a vision and I tell them that I need a plan from them to deliver us to that vision, when it becomes their plan, they become accountable and responsible for it. And yeah. that means that it's theirs, it's their baby, in the same way that the business is my baby, 
they go away and own that and i know that they're going to sweat blood and tears to to, to get where we need to be and, and it's, it's just made a huge difference mm. there's, there's a couple of things i want to pack pull out and, and unpack from that um this delegation piece you mentioned around how you can delegate something to people and they have a responsibility. I see a, a huge mistake, and it's not like, let's be honest, you've been in business for a long time. I'm sure before 18 months ago, you were delegating things to people, right? Yet what we see is that a lot of people delegate through like abdication. They like yeah. just trying to get rid of things and no, there's no strategy or structure in place yeah. that allows that delegation to be effective. If you look back to how you used to delegate things, prior to, to this system, what would you say is the kind of core difference between back then to, to now? You know, because you just said, like you now have staff that are willing to kind of put blood, sweat and tears into making sure this stuff gets executed. Mm. The difference is, so, so what was the same is that I put a lot of effort and a lot of work into the detail about what was required. Then I would put too much effort into them being prescriptive about how we should do that. But, the biggest problem what uh how can i put it the so what i wasn't doing was saying here is the business problem we're trying to solve what do you suggest we do to get there mm. but the second thing i wasn't doing was defining where there was and working out what were the measures to to find out that we've got there what were the kpis what were if I've described where we want to be, how do I know when we get when we've when we've arrived, and how do I know when to celebrate? Mm. So I would give somebody a task, and it would almost be never ending because we didn't know where there was. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a really really key point that you've mentioned. Is a lot of people um, delegate, but they delegate from a place of complete control, and, and and really that's what I've heard in what you've said is that you've delegated. You've made these you know high detailed plans. You wanted to hear specifically from them how they're going to do it and, and no doubt recorrect them if what they shared wasn't the way that you wanted it to be done. Uh, right? And there was not clarity around what the end game looks like. And so therefore you, you become the smartest person in the room mm -hmm. because everyone are just little, uh, little minions executing on, on your steps and your plan, the way that you think it should be done. So you essentially yeah. clone yourself, which is fine if you're running a six figure business because you know, you need to clone yourself. But when you get up to the seven figures or multiple seven figures, you need to be able to, like you said, um, entice some of the smartest people in, in the country, in the world, in the state to work for you. The only way you can do that is to captivate their genius. And you can't do that if you're a control freak or yeah. if, if you're like, hey, just follow this step by step. And so what I'm hearing you say is that the, the significant difference there is that now you spend more of your time getting clear of what's the outcome of us actually doing this project or us actually executing the strategy. Like, not what are the steps, like what are the clear outcome? How do we know when we get there? What's the impact going to be to the business, to the bottom line, to, to my life, to your life, to, to, to where we're going in our vision? And then basically allow them to, to have free reign to execute on what they believe they need to, to get there. Yep. And, and, and your role is then to, I guess, provide some level of support to ensure they stay on track to that destination. Yeah, and keep keep reminding them what the destination is. Not not how to get there, but keep reminding them why we need to get somewhere, why it's important to the business, and how much we can support them to get there. And if we arrive there, then we celebrate. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a very different approach because what happens is that through that approach, you start to build an organization of what, what I'd call entrepreneurs. So mm -hmm. entrepreneurs in your organization so entrepreneurs that don't necessarily want to go out and, and do it on their own, they don't want to have the risk and, and all that other stuff associated with running a business, um, but they're fully capable of innovating. They're fully capable of making decisions. They're fully capable of, of, of um, coming forth and creating things in the business to get to their destination. And I think that what you shared was, was super important that one of the core roles I feel that we have as the visionary of the organization is that we're the, we're the gatekeeper and we're the, we're, the, we're the holder of that light. And mm -hmm. it's one of, our, one of our key responsibilities is to constantly remind our staff where we're going, mm -hmm. right? Not so much where we're at or where we've come from or, or what we're doing wrong, but where we're going and why yep. are we going now? Yep. That sharing that, that, that emotive story around what it's like to be involved on the destination or on, on the journey they're on. Mm -hmm. and, and whilst I, 
what, what I don't want to do is pat myself on the back for achieving this um, because some of it was by, uh, well, <laughs> maybe it was your design, not mine, but the first thing I learned wasn't actually the delegation piece, it was the rhythm piece. And the rhythm piece was such an eye opener. Mm. I invested so much time in it that I forgot to interfere in certain stuff. And by setting, by setting this, by spending a lot of time reminding people where we need to get to, I looked around one day, I was like, holy crap, we got there. <laughs> and that in itself built the trust in the process. So mm. I'd love to sit here and say, hey, I spotted this was an issue and then I, you know, I, I removed myself from this and I delegated this and then I set the rhythm. The rhythm was the thing that was absolutely abundantly clear that was missing from my, from my business. Mm. Everything was stuck in my head. I knew where, where I wanted to get to, but nobody else did. I didn't even tell them once where we were going, let alone keep reminding them. And as soon as I made that change, I started seeing magic happen all around all around the business and one of the biggest things and i think i'm possibly repeating back something that you said here barry one of the things i started to see happen was people would come to me with ideas mm. and they, they felt a freedom to start expressing themselves brilliant right. an, an ironic brilliant example of this was just last week where we're implementing the rockefeller habits through the business from from the scaling up uh, program and I sent out a PDF and I said, please can everyone print this off and write down their scores and bring it to this session. 20 minutes later, I got a note back from one of our data guys and he said, uh, you, you might want to consider sending this link out. And I clicked on this link and he basically digitized the entire question set into a, um, into a survey. And he said, now send that out. And he sent it out. And then he sent me a note back an hour later. He said, Oh, you've had, 15 responders and by the way if you click on this tab you'll see all the stats in in no time at all he had just produced one of the most brilliant things i've seen the irony that it's around the rock and fell habits probably shouldn't be missed um and before i think they would have felt the need to come and check that that's you know that that, that was required or, or waited for me to have the idea but they seem to have a lot more freedom these days to uh to express themselves and we've seen that in the client in the customer in the employee uh review sessions the feedback that we get the surveys that we send out we've just we've just seen that it, it, it just feels like a happier place to work yeah i want to bring note to the people that that are watching this session today or listening that maybe have a smaller business or may not even have a team because there's still so much in what you've shared that they can take on board in their business um you know, the task audit process that we go through, it's one of the first things we take clients through, honestly, is, is one of the best things we've ever made. And I think people often um, see it as being too easy or simple and don't give it the value of the time that it deserves. Mm. And it really ties back into what you shared as well, is that we have, we have an allotment of allocation of time per day. And we, we as human beings will always use what's available to us, whether that's money or whether that's time. And, you know, we can use that available time to do low low priority tasks. It might be things like, you know, after month for people is bookkeeping or maybe clean their business premise. You know, a role that's worth 20 bucks an hour or 30 bucks an hour. Or we could use that time to go and create joint venture partnerships or develop marketing campaigns or sales funnels and things that are going to bring a high return on investment. And so coming back to what you said, it, 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 it was your ability to start to focus on the key areas in the business that we're going to provide the highest ROI, yep. right? Or, or uh, you know, a return on investment or return on impact. And so, when you start to focus on those higher levels, those lower level activities or those lower level um, behaviours that you used to do, i.e., like micromanage your staff, you no longer had time for them. Mm -hmm. your, your time was being focused on things or actually starting to move business business forwards. And this comes back to what you said at the very very start of this session, which is around the, the fact that your business plateaued. Your business plateaued because the business couldn't grow more than your capacity right. to, to maintain control. And, right. and that was where you, like it was a decent effort, but, but the business was capped at you. And it was once you started to step yourself back and focus on the things that could make the biggest difference, like i.e. you mentioned um, the rhythm and so what you're speaking about there is um, we have a training called Win the Week. And it's, based, it's, a, it's an agenda that we, we made up where um, by you run your weekly meetings and it makes those weekly meetings um, very, very impactful. Uh, it makes those weekly meetings something that your staff want to turn up to. 
And it also addresses a few fundamental things. It has a celebration piece, which allows everyone to kind of be acknowledged for the work they're doing in the business, which acknowledgement's huge for staff to, to feel like they're being seen. Uh, it allows the opportunity to, to present problems or challenges or where the business is stuck so that the business owner and all other staff members can, can identify those areas and actually do something about it. Yep. And it's a very, very nice rhythm that after you put it in place, and it takes a couple of months to really get it honed in, but you notice the whole entire organization starts to run in a state of harmony mm -hmm. because things are coming up and things are getting resolved. And there's these acknowledgement pieces that start to build, the culture starts to build, and the impact within and through the organization, as you've shared so many times, mate, is, is huge mm -hmm. um, in that respect. And through that process and you kind of stepping back, you've now started to build an organization where, like you said, a team member can take initiative, do something that not, not only is brilliant, but saves you and everyone else a bunch of time and makes things far, far more efficient. Yep. Yeah. Let's talk, about some of, let's talk about some of the results and then I'll, I want to dive back into this two pieces. One is this, um, this identity piece that we go through as visionaries when we start to step out of our business. And I want to speak about that because it's, it's so important and not very, not very often spoken about. And also some of the other strategies you've implemented. But first, like, where are you guys today? Like, what are the sort of results, as much as you're willing to share um, publicly, what are some of the results that you guys have seen um, through implementing these, these changes? Yeah, okay. So the first is just in terms of the quality of people that we've been able to hire in the last, in the last three or four months. We've, I've, uh, one of the first things that had to change that, that it became very clear that you guys pointing out, pointed out to me, I needed that integrator. So I think you put me onto that rocket fuel book, which is a fantastic book. And the first thing I did was went out and hired a general manager and she's fantastic. And she freed up a lot of my time to help to then concentrate on some other areas of the business. Um, but most importantly, she taught me to keep my nose out of stuff. And she, she gave me that confidence. She had this, I didn't need to worry about it. I just needed to give her the idea and, yeah. and she would come back with, with excellent work. Having hired the GM and just things just started to flow a little bit better and, and we, we started to get that rhythm up. Um, we, we, since then, we have managed to employ a couple of people who knew the business very well. One of those people is now GM of product marketing and sales and they, we delivered a solution using this company as a platform and he took me aside after we finished this project and he took me aside and said i want to come and work for your business and and he's here today um as some of you might know i'm we, we've got a strategic alliance with a company called CoreLogic, who some of you may know is the leading authority in property data in australia they made they've had because the, the property market as it is given that 90% of their revenue comes from just how many property transactions they are. They've been on a bit of a downturn for, for a couple of years now. And they, they made some pretty, I think they've, they've probably lost about 40% of their staff. One of the people that was let go was their um, general manager of marketing. And he re he's a good friend of mine actually, but he reached out to me and said, I've seen what you're doing. I want a piece of it. And he joined us two weeks ago. So because we're out there in the market, visibly performing well as a team, people are telling us they want to come and join my team. That's, that's huge. You know, I can't underestimate just how easy that makes life when good people want to join your team. What that has led to um, is some of the account managers, some of the technical solution delivery people, in, because they're being allowed by me, removing myself as that bottleneck, because they're being allowed to take ownership of their customers, we've seen revenue and profit increase. Because we took an evaluation, because we spent time, one of the questions you asked me about 10 minutes ago was, what, 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 are, the, what are the biggest changes I've seen to the business? What was I doing previously that, I was, that I'm not doing now? It's this, this sounds ludicrous and I, I can't believe I'm saying it now. Two years ago, I wouldn't have even considered this a problem. 
instead of looking at the finance of my business, I had this attitude, which is as long as we keep getting the revenue in, everything else will be apples. And so I just concentrated. I've run after money. And, and because I was the bottleneck, exactly to your point, I could only do that to the most of my ability. I had nobody else that was doing it. Other people would pick up my mess on the back end, and, but, but ultimately I was driving all of the revenue. Therefore, there's only so many hours in the day, therefore we were only ever gonna get to a certain amount of revenue. But because I wasn't looking at, at other factors of finance, I was missing a huge, huge trick. You mentioned that our EBITDA has doubled. Our revenue hasn't increased a huge amount. Our profit's gone through the roof. And the reason our profit went through the roof is because we took an evaluation on third party data supplies. So data is obviously the lifeblood of my business. And we looked at how much we were spending on data. And some of these companies absolutely loved us. We've been working with them for seven, eight, nine years, making them a lot of revenue. And I just thought, well, there's got to be a way of making that more efficient. And again, everything that I've learned told me that I shouldn't lead that up. I should, I should find somebody in the business that would like to own that as a project. And I took Dave, who's our commercial director, who you've met, Barry, and I said to him, you know, what's going on? To, how, how much are you enjoying this? And he said, look, it's great. He's like, this is what I've always done. I've always sold. He was like, but, but he, he, he pointed out, he said, oh, I would love a role where I was looking at th our third party partnerships and how I could make that more efficient. I said to him, how, how would that look? And basically he, he came up with the idea of approaching all the data owners and saying, look, we've been doing this for a long time. Um, the market's getting tougher to work in. Would you like guaranteed revenue instead of the pay as you go model that we have been doing? Would you like, a guaranteed revenue model where we commit to spending X with you a year, we pay that up front and we just get access to a carte blanche all you can eat buffet of your data. That has reduced our cost of sale by 80%. Wow. wow. 80%. And, and cost of sale is six times bigger than my, than my wage bill. Hmm. So that's the difference it's made to the business. And it wasn't my idea and I didn't execute it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> oh, okay. So revenue increase, significant increase on EBITDA, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Also attracting some um, incredible talent as well. I want to come back to um, what I think is, is not spoken about enough. And that's the significant shift that we have to go through as visionaries. So any of you uh, that haven't read the book, Rocket Fuel, I highly recommend it. Um, it really helps you to identify and understand more around your own personality type and why you are the way that you are, uh, both uh, on the opportunity to create great things and also the opportunity to destroy a lot of things as well. Mm -hmm. And how to better find your integrator or your general manager or CEO in your organization there is, however, a significant shift that we have to go through as business owners from a mindset or psychological perspective. And it's a, it's a very challenging shift because we spent time and money and energy building this business. And there was a study that a, a bunch of uh, Harvard students did where they, um, I think it was an MRI, took an MRI scan of somebody's brain and they showed this person uh, a picture of their child while they scan their brain and notice the, the neurological pathways and connections and things that change or happen in their brain while looking at the child. And they, they then asked like a benchmark question to reset the scene and then had them look at the logo of their business. And the interesting thing that they found out is that they had the same connection to their business as they had to their, to their child, right? Which is, which is incredible. And so what they started to realize is that us as business owners, we see our business as part of us, the same as our, same as our child. Mm -hmm. Right. So think about like what parents go through when they first drop their kid off for the first day of school or when their child first starts to drive or goes to that first party without them. Like all these different shifts we have to go through as parents, your business is no different. And there's a big moment we go through when we have to, when we start to step back and allow someone else to step into the integrator role, take the reins and drive the thing without us needing to be involved in that process. Like there's a huge trust aspect of that but there's a massive dent to uh, our sense of, of sense of self. Can you kind of share what you've noticed in you 
around this transition over the past 18 months of kind of having to let go? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I'd say the one difference between your children and your business is your children are only 50% you. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, when, when we first met, this business was just a carbon copy with my DNA running through it completely. Um, it, it was basically built in my vision and we've, it's taken a long time, but we're slowly steering away from that now, which is great. Um, what have I noticed change in myself? Um, it sounds a really s stupid and simple thing, but I, I don't work nights anymore. I don't work weekends anymore. And I switch off and I switch off because I know I'm in good hands and I know that I'm not responsible for it all. And I know that, I know that if, if I've got a, if, if, if there's a problem that's been spotted in the business, first of all, problems are being spotted. And, and as, as much as that sounds as a negative, that's a huge positive because we're now measuring things that indicate when we've got a problem before we wouldn't realize there was a problem until the, until that uh, manifested itself in an issue. Mm. But we're now spotting problems before they come up. And now when there is a problem, I identify whose business unit it's in and they become accountable for fixing that problem. I'm there to support them. But it just means that I'm not lying in bed at 11.30 at night thinking about it because I know I've given it to somebody, they're going to take care of it and it's something I don't have to worry about. That's, that's, that's huge for me. Yeah. If, if you look back at the last couple of years, what do you think is the process that you've been through to go from, you know, being heavily involved in business, you were working ridiculous hours. I remember distinctly me having a conversation with you and you almost just couldn't see any other way um, <laughs> other than doing, do you remember the conversation any other way than doing what you're doing, which was ridiculous hours. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and I know that that was having some impacts on, on your family as well. Mm -hmm. If you look, if you look back now and, and you were, I'm speaking to an earlier version of yourself, what are the kind of steps that you would say to, to go through to get from then working ridiculous hours, being stuck, kind of overly controlling the business to now where you don't work nights, don't work weekends, significant change in your team dynamic and culture and obviously growth in your business as well. What would you say those kind of key steps have been? for you, you know, to, to share with the guys that are listening today? I don't know if this is helpful feedback, but one of the first things I had to do was get over myself. And yeah. I did that by taking three days off, almost guilt-free. Yeah. And I checked in after those three days and the world was still spinning, believe it or not. Then I did something that was insane. I went to Europe for six weeks and I came back and the team had delivered a product for one of our biggest clients, Stockland. Yeah. That product went on to win the person who we built it for. She, she won, imagine Stockland's not a small organization. She won the chairman's award for innovation. And that happened while I was on a, by a pool in Italy. Mm. so that I, I don't know if this is great advice but the first thing i would suggest before you plan for any of this is go and see what the implications of you not being around do see what that does to the team because they step up exactly as my team did they stepped up and then i and then that gave me a bit more trust and belief in the process that made me think okay well we're on to something here if mm. if i gave them a direction i gave i told them what we were trying to do and I stepped away, mm. they can still deliver this. They can still deliver this and probably better than if it's all coming out of my head because mm. I've only got one way of doing it. And the team I handed over, there were four of them. So by a factor of four, they will have more ideas. It's um, something that just come to mind that is like how you can kill plants with kindness, right? <laughs> and in many ways, how you're killing your business with kindness or killing, killing the growth opportunity of your business with kindness. Like, you know, if you overwater plants for argument's sake or, uh, you know, don't prune them back. You can actually kill them and, and prevent them from growing into their full potential. Whereas, you know, to, to, to go and like carefully trim off the, the, the branches that have maybe a, a bit dead or broken or frail or even trim them back, you create more new growth to come through. And, you know, often we'll share with people when, when they get to a stage where they feel that they have some structure in the business, just take time off mm -hmm. and see what breaks. 
because one thing that freaks a lot of business owners out is, is the feeling of letting a customer down or something breaking or something not happening, but you actually don't know what it's going to be. And often our perception of the situation is much worse than the situation itself. Mm -hmm. And so you stepping back, like you said, having three days off, like you started with a small few days, it was enough to, to go, oh, wow, the business is still alive. Things are still spinning. Yeah, there might be some problems, but the team are on top of them, which then gives you that um, encouragement and trust to be able to take more and more time off. So I think that's a really good thing is that uh, as business owners, it's important that we do just take time off and step right out of the business to see what breaks. And also to start to kind of, in many ways, cut that umbilical cord that we have to our business. Yep. You know, like think about this, like it's impossible for, for humans to grow with that umbilical cord still attached. There's a, there's a phase in which it's important for it to be attached and a phase in which it's important for it to be disconnected and so forth in, in order for, for humans to grow, right? Charles to grow. Business is the same. Like right now, have you still got your umbilical cord attached to your business? And are you, you sucking it dry of the life that, that, that is there as a potential? And mm -hmm. maybe step back. Yep. Mm -hmm. One of the things you noted there was the impact it's having on the family. How one huge change that has happened is I now, uh, every Friday I work from home, I take the kids to school, I start work at about 9.30, 10. I finish up at 2.30, I go and get them from school and I'm done. Mm -hmm. And I now, like the, the kids, just talk about how much they love on a Friday afternoon, we go and do an activity. Then we come back to the house and, and do some science experiments and some magic tricks. And they talk about it being, you know, the, the, the favorite part of their week. Yeah. It just wasn't there before. I just, I could not believe that I would be able to take time off to consistently take time off to spend time with my children. Mm. Didn't believe it was possible. And I guess like, how have you noticed that's actually impacted you in business? Like I know for me, those sorts of activities fill me up. They bring about a new sense of fire or passion within me that allows me to go about the business with more than, than like the whole attitude that I used to have many years ago, which is like, oh, just a few more hours, just a few more hours, I'll get this done, then I'll go and hang out with my kids. And by the time you hang out with the kids, like you're not present anyway, you're still all caught up in work, you're worn out, and then if you come back to your business half cooked, yeah, uh, exactly that. Um, we, I think I was so close to burnout. It's not funny, but I just kept going. And what was happening was I would get in work early, um, you know, get in at 7.38 so I could get an hour and a half in before anyone else turned up. Then I'd work all day. Then I'd go home, put the kids to bed, get the laptop out and work. And then I'd lie in bed thinking about work and then rinse, wash, repeat. And, and then that would overspill to the weekend. And it was almost like, it was almost like I didn't feel comfortable unless I was doing that. It was like, you, you, you get this mindset that says, oh, the more hours I do, the more successful I'll be. But you just don't realize how tired that's making you. Well, th think about that. That's, that's like, I'm relating it back to parenting because I think that it's got a lot of synergies. That, that's that paranoia parenting. You know, it's, it's like if you're, if you wrap your child up in cotton wool, they don't learn resilience. Mm -hmm. They don't learn how to fend for themselves out there. And they're going to grow up with a false perception of what life's like until one day you're not around to protect them anymore. Look after them. Mm -hmm. It's the same, like realize what stage of growth is business at right now? Is, is it a, is it a baby? Is it a child? Is it an unborn child that needs a lot of attention or is it kind of moving towards its adolescence is you're still trying to treat it like a child? You know, like the business requires something different at each phase of that cycle, at each phase of that growth. Mm. And it's like, you know, you wouldn't feed an adult um, breast milk, for argument's sake, right? You might, but you probably wouldn't. You wouldn't feed them, um, you know, runny food either. So your business requires different things throughout its cycle. And mm. so that's what calls us as business owners to keep evolving. And the only way we're going to evolve is if we take time to actually step back and assess where are things at. Mm hmm yeah, 100%. That's going to be the call of the day. Like your business, you adults don't drink breast milk. Anyway, <laughs> cool. Anything you want to add, Georgie? Otherwise, we'll, uh, we'll wrap this up a bit early. Really appreciate your time and uh, your ongoing support and, and the work that you're doing here with us at The Game Changers. Uh, no, 
I'm glad I could help. Uh, a million thanks to you and the team for helping me get here. Yeah, you're totally welcome, mate. You've, you've done the work, you've shown up and you've um, followed the process. So I'm doing less work. Yeah, well, <laughs> good thing. And it's, uh, I think it was your shout as well in Sydney, I heard. That sounds about right. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time, Georgie, and thank, um, thanks you guys for showing up as well. Look forward to seeing you all uh, a bit over a week, isn't it, in uh, Sydney? Mm -hmm. Looking forward to it. Can't wait. All right, thanks so much for your time. Thanks all. Bye. Bye bye. If you're in a position that many of our clients were before joining us, which is that your business is controlling you rather than you controlling your business, we would love to have a chat to you to see whether or not we might be the right fit to partner with you to help you grow and succeed in business. And over the past eight years, we've helped hundreds of business owners around the world to grow, scale and succeed in business. Uh, many of our clients report we've helped them to triple their profits and double their time off in 12 months or less. If you jump onto YouTube and notice the hundreds of testimonies, you'd see that this is a common theme amongst them. If you're a business owner that's generating more than $300,000 a year in annual revenue, uh, whether it's 500 million, 5 million, even $10 million a year, and you're looking to take your business and your life to the next level, we might be able to help. If you're noticing that your business is lacking structure, maybe systems or processes, maybe you're not quite attracting enough or, or the right type of quality leads, making enough sales, or maybe you've been having issues finding, hiring, retaining, and training the right team members, we could be a fit for you. Ultimately, we believe that we never have business problems, we have personal problems that are expressed through our business. And a lot of the work we do is with you as a business owner, helping you to constantly upgrade the way that you see life, the way that you make decisions, and the way that you help construct a profitable and purpose-driven business. In order for us to do that though, you need to book in a quick 15-minute uh, application call with one of our scaling specialists here at The Game Changers. Through the 15-minute call, we're gonna ask you a bunch of questions to see if or how we might better help you. If we can't help you, we'll let you know politely and do our best to point in the direction of someone that can. However, we can help you. We'll look at booking you a one hour game plan session where we're gonna dive a lot deeper into where you and your business are at right now, where it is that you want to go in the next three, five, and 10 years time, and what are the potential roadblocks or challenges or even opportunities that are along the journey in order for you to get there faster. If you're really feeling that it's time for you to experience the love and the joy of running a business again, if you're really wanting to experience a business that does actually operate without you while still producing profit, uh, we may very well be the right fit. So book in a 15 minute call, we can have a chat and uh, see where we go from there. My name is Babo Diddy and uh, thanks for listening. Hopefully we get a chance to talk soon.